Hello everyone, this tutorial will talk about how to make a portfolio using Adobe InDesign. I'm going to show you this portfolio here. This is something I used to apply for a grant uh, and I had to showcase my current work. So you're going to use a portfolio to apply for any job in the creative field, but you'll also use a portfolio for scholarship opportunities, um, getting into upper level courses or upper level programs and any other kind of thing for the creative field. So as you can see, the first page, I have all my contact information and I use like a really nice image, like a zoom in of my print to showcase and prepare the person for the, for what the portfolio is gonna look like. This is my chance to zoom in on a print and show all my detail. Now for you, you don't have to be very complicated with this front page, but I try to make it a little bit memorable. So you can use bright colors or, you know, patterns or something like this. It's your one chance where you can pull the viewer in and kind of have a little freedom because the rest of your portfolio should be very clean, professional, organized, and consistent. So as I navigate to my next page, you'll notice I have a nice big image of the portfolio piece. And then down here is all my descriptions of the image. So your portfolio might have fine art, it could have illustration, it could have design. No matter what, you should still describe the work. So I always have the label, the year I did it. If it's for a client, I would list the client and maybe any information about that. You do not have to follow this. This is just my portfolio. And then on each page, you'll notice I have my website. This is my old website. But as you can see here, the website stays in the same spot. Now, depending on what the image looks like, my background might shift. So this print is on white, so I want to let the background make it pop, give it contrast, so I change it to a gray. But your whole goal is to not upstage the work, but you want to present it like it's in a gallery. So same thing, you'll notice the labels are in the same spot when the work is horizontal. When the work shifts to vertical, then you'll see I moved it over here and that stays consistent throughout too. I even designed this portfolio to keep that in mind. As long as your labeling is consistent, you're in good shape. So let's set that up in InDesign. So for this assignment, you're gonna go to new file and you're gonna select pixels for this because it's meant to be displayed on the computer. This is not for a printed out portfolio. This is a digital portfolio. And we're going to set it to the standard image viewing size on a computer, which is 16 by 9, which is 1920 by 1080 pixels. For this assignment, set it to six pages and you're going to change your columns to at least five. And now these are just guides for you. And then our margins, we're going to adjust a little bit, but I'm going to, for now, increase my margins on all sides. And we can always adjust this later and everything else will leave at zero. And here we go. So you notice I made four margins because this is going to help guide where I place my imagery. Now all my, all your imagery is going to be different. So just use this with kind of a, kind of as a, as a start, but of course you can modify. Now, some of the stuff that I showed you, I make an illustrator. You can of course make it directly in InDesign by, you know, using the shape and text tools that are in this bar here. I just find that I work a lot quicker in Ill Illustrator and I wanted to show you you can do either. So let's open up Illustrator. You notice in Illustrator, I'm creating a new, whole new portfolio with these works. So I'm showing you work I've published for this class. So I did a zoom in of the gig poster that I, I really liked. I thought it was pretty neat. Um, let me view it in trim view so you get the whole effect. I've done Ashley Taylor portfolio here, my name at the bottom, and then um, portfolio at the bottom here. Now for the first cover, you don't even need this. You can just do this if you wanted to. So I'm gonna actually hit save and update that. But for the bottom though, this is what's gonna stay consistent. It's gonna be 
Ashley Taylor portfolio. You notice I left a little gap here because I'm gonna show you how to put page numbers. Now you can do other things. So if it's maybe you wanna put your website down here, as you saw, I had my website. You do not need to put a website here. You could put your email, anything down here, as long as it's consistent. Notice how small it is too. Do not make it too big, right? Keep it small so you have plenty of room for your work. So I'm gonna hit save on both and go back into InDesign. Okay, so that InDesign file gave me pages and it gave me my master. I'm going to want to make a master page that has my that bottom black bar on all the pages. So I'm going to double click here to open my master. And now I'm going to place that Illustrator file. I love placing Illustrator files as opposed to JPEGs because if I make an adjustment in Illustrator, it will automatically trigger InDesign to make that same change. So I'm gonna select bottom, hit open, and of course there it is, and I just need to place it at the bottom. And now you'll notice if I go to my first page, it's in all of the pages, like that. And it shouldn't move. Now I wanna go back into my master because I wanna add my page number for each one. So instead of having to go per sheet and type in one, two, three, four, I'm going to generate that automatically. So I'm going to go and use my type tool here and make a paragraph there. I'm actually going to go ahead and change it to a typeface that I'm already using. And then I just want to make it white. So we'll see it. So instead of going in and typing one, two, three, I'm going to go ahead and go to type. You're going to go to markers, current page number, and you'll notice it says A because it's just a master. But when you go into your pages, you'll notice it says one, two, three, four, and so on. Now, I don't like how that's placed yet, so I'm going to go back in the master and increase the size and move and placement. So I'm gonna increase that page size and move it maybe to be right in line with my guide there. And then, there we go. So I have six pages. Um, we only need to do five pieces. So for the first one is gonna be my title page. So I could remove the um, master from this one. So I'm gonna hit override and delete that because I won't need it. I can keep the page number if I wanted. And I'm gonna go to File, Place, and then I'm gonna do my front. Now, like I said, you can do this completely in InDesign if you want. I just work a lot quicker. In Illustrator, I love being able to customize. And so there's my portfolio. So now we have the whole portfolio set up. And then this part, you'll just go to File, place, and then I'll find the portfolio that I want to do. So we'll do our album cover. So you decide on how you want to view it. So say you just want to show the front, you can make it really big. So I might go with that. And then in this section, I'm going to actually add my information. So I'm going to say, Album cover, zoom in for you. Album cover, Florence. You can even, yeah, album cover, Florence and the. I'm going to put the course. You can put what you did it in. So if you wanted to put Adobe Illustrator and InDesign. And then the year. That could be one way you do it. You could also do, so if you actually did work for a client, you could put client. So if I actually did do this for Florence and the Machine, I would put that. But of course, I did not design this for her, so that's why I'm focusing in on the client. So you could also do album cover. You could do Adobe InDesign.
And if I wanted to add the year here, I could. It all really depends upon what you're applying to. Now, if you're applying to the graphic design portfolio or the, or the studio portfolio, you want to take a more academic route this way. But if you're applying to a job, you know, you might not want to focus in on the class. You would focus in on the design itself. So and when I just decide where I want to place that and how far, let's make that a little bit bigger. So it can be seen and just like that and you're going to do that through throughout so if you wanted to include your back design if it's the same design i would keep the label the same you could even say so so if you choose to do the back of the front you could do uh album cover 2021 front and then maybe here Maybe I won't, you know, maybe we'll do the year there. And then that way it shows that it's the same exact project, but just the back. Now this counts as one project, you know, one, one thing for when you're applying. So keep that in mind. You could keep, you could make two on the same page. It's really up to you. So we put back. Sometimes if I have multiple pages, I'll designate a color background to show that they're similar. So then we'll put the same thing here. To keep it consistent, what I do is I paste the same image in place and then I'll go file, place, and I will grab the back and place it inside of it. So I just selected the item and that way it's the exact same size and I've changed my label. So we'll do another one. So let's file, we'll place our good poster mock-up here. So it's another horizontal one. So let's do edit, paste in place. And then we'll go to file, place, and I'll select my geek poster mockup and it'll also place it there. And then I can shift it up to fit. And that is perfect. Looked out there. And I will do the same thing, copy this over, go to edit, make sure my new page is selected, go to edit, paste in place. And then of course change this to gig poster. You can also add design. And if you needed to, this one is 11 by 14. If you wanted to actually give the size, size is important for certain things. Um, obviously this size, um, wasn't given to you, but it's a square, so you can come up with that, and so forth. Now, multiple items. So say you wanted to add the gig poster and maybe, like, the, the mock-up, but also it's mock-up in the wild. We can go to File, Place, and Mock-up 2. And let's see if we can fit it into this space over here. Now, the one thing I don't like about this is we're seeing the exact same image twice, so it's not really needed. If the mock-up was giving you some really cool, you know, realistic 3D part effects, I would do it, but for this, I wouldn't. But what I might do is actually bring in a, a detailed shot. So this you could actually do, and we could just bring in a rectangle frame tool here, and we'll place into that rectangle frame tool that same mock-up, but, 
And you can also use that rectangle frame tool for everything, but you can also zoom in on one part, like say you wanted to showcase. Now this one's rather blurry, so I would actually go and place my Illustrator file, not my JPEG, but that gives you a cool example. And what I would do down here is add a little label. So I'll just copy this and I'll add detail. And that is a cool way to fill up space and showcase your amazing gig poster design. And let's just do one more as we wrap up here. So let's place one more item. Our newspaper one. Yeah, there we go. So newspaper. I'm gonna make that bigger there. This one, I would probably have the image also. So we'll also drag in the image. Yeah, like right there, just so people can see it like that. You don't need to put photo montage. You could say editorial design. You could even credit the article. This one was done in Photoshop. And I did some Illustrator work, so that's that's important. I'm gonna remove the size. And this, you could just put, this isn't a detail. But this this is could be design or mock up left kind of think like a yearbook <laughs> and then design right or top whichever you want that way the viewer knows obviously it's it's obvious to you but to the viewer don't assume they they know. And then wrap up and add your final assignment. So this is what your portfolio will look like. You're going to go and export it as a PDF. Make sure it's interactive. And then you're gonna first name, last name, portfolio. And then hit save. Now make sure you've got all your pages selected. You can tell it to open in full screen mode automatically. That's just a cool little feature, but don't worry about it for this one. And hit export. And hit okay. Now always preview the file before. So, and you just wanna make sure when you're previewing them that your all your text is not jumping. So as you can see here, it's looking great. All my pages are reading the same. And there you have, and there you have your final portfolio and you are ready to showcase your talents. Thank you. 24 minutes.